VR Chat, the next frontier. These are the experiences from Gunter's universe. His continuing mission to seek out and connect with VR devs and passionate enthusiasts, to discuss theories, beliefs, and rhetoric of all kinds, and to boldly go where no show has ever gone before. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to Gunter's Universe, everyone. It's good to see you. Thanks for all the love, all those heart emojis, thumbs up. Let me give you guys a couple of those, too. Yeah, I love you guys. All right, we got to We can only do the heart. Not quick enough. Okay. Uh, we got a great show tonight. Our guest is Tupper. He's right there. He's a VR chat community, community member. Um, he has a lot of experience in online communities, um, such as Homeworld, WoW, and uh, I guess it's spelled, uh, pronounced Grail. You tell me, oh, growl. We actually never figured it out, um, but yeah, probably. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. Well, let's set it in stone. Growl uh, online. Oh, growl. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. Gra- let, let's go with growl. I think that was the, the official show. one. Exactly. Growl. Okay. And he's also a damn cute anime girl, if I may say so myself. How are you doing tonight? Uh, pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. How about you? I'm doing good. Show started. Uh, blood is pumping. Feeling it. Feeling the love. Feeling the excitement. So let's get in and ask you some fun questions. Starting off with background, and then we'll go into stuff sure. about these online communities. We'll talk about VR chat and VR, and then I want to hit up anime. I think you can teach me a few things about anime culture. Well, at least I'm hoping. So I can certainly try. Let's do like just simple stuff like where are you from, or and where are you now? Um, so, uh, where am I from? Um, my parents are military, so all over the place, but South Carolina in the United States is close enough to home. Interesting. Um, I am currently in Virginia, just south of Washington, D.C., um, literally a stone's throw away from D.C. itself, so, um, but yeah, I, I, I've lived in a bunch of different places, but South Carolina is close enough for home. So there's a lot of political stuff up that area. Do you, do you get involved yeah. in things, or is it um, just too much mo- agnosium? Uh, it, it it can be, um, but the closest I've gotten to involved um, is uh, I went to the uh, March for Science that was earlier this year. Um, I'm pretty Science. active in uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, due to my profession uh, in uh, I guess the word would be meat space uh, I, I'm very active in science <laughs> and that kind of thing just science activism mm. uh, awareness so it was a very uh, close to home uh, topic I guess hmm. well, why, why is why is that interesting to you why would you go and be an activist for science I mean there's people that love science and are nerds right. about it but this I've never heard of this um so not to uh, get ourselves too political here, but uh, science is effectively the, it's the observation of the real world and representation of it in fact, right? Um, it's, it's how we represent real life. Um, so sure. if you are misrepresenting science, um, if you say it, you perform something that has been defined by science, um, say mm. a scientific process, and you do it incorrectly intentionally, you're now misrepresenting fact, which is otherwise known as lying. Um, so, mm-hmm. I mean, if you want a 10 mile up view, that's basically it. Uh, so the March for Science was so, a general, it, it wasn't, it wasn't specifically politically aligned, but it was very much a, uh, a call to attention for this sort of things. Um, unfortunately it got rained out, uh, so it didn't have that big of a, uh, a, mm-hmm. uh, attendance as, uh, people expected. Um, so it's people that are misrepresented and like on purpose misrepresenting, um, or what if they're just kind of confused? Oh, no, like, that, like the, is it meta science or pseudoscience or like you know the new age spiritual science? Um, what that, do you think about that? No, that's been a big thing as well. Um, so uh, not not nearly as much in that specific thing, but just generally, um, I my uh, degree is in physics, so there's a lot of. Um, so you know you, you know that story how every professor has how they say oh well I got the, I got this uh, letter from this crazy guy in the, out in the middle of nowhere like Utah or something and he claims to have invented free energy yeah those happen like to everyone 
that has yeah. an address and a university listing in a physics department. And I imagine the same thing happens in chemistry and all of that. Um, and these are people basically preaching pseudoscience and that kind of thing. And unfortunately is, the, the, the unfortunate thing is rather, uh, with that sort of, uh, I guess, mindset, if you don't follow the rules of science, if you don't follow the rules of, you know, how to observe and do all your experiments and how you remember from high school that you, you know, hypothesize and you create an experiment, you experiment and then you readjust. Yeah. If you don't follow that, then you're just basically Oof. making stuff up. Yeah, exactly. That's so. Gotcha. All right, let's get into, well, uh, so what school, tell us a little bit about your schooling. Um. So I... Uh, God, when did I graduate high school? I don't remember. It was either 2005, 2006. I didn't do well. Um, so I kind of just, um, I was a pretty typical kid around those ages playing a lot of, uh, World of Warcraft, specifically a bunch of different video games. Um, I kind of got, um, oh boy. Oh, well, I guess we're out of time, folks. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> I guess from here, it triggered all the way over there. Hunter's, Hunter's Universe uh, Lightning. I got, I got triggered. All right. Yeah, that, Sorry was, about that. that was a lightning episode. <laughs> but, um, See you later. <laughs> thanks for coming. Oh, good show. <laughs> Is this a good time? Can you guys all sit down again? You there's a trigger. Oh, sure, we can do that. Uh, let's stand up and sit down again. It's a fun. This is my mini game I have on the show. Sure. But first, yes, I got to move the OVR. All right. right. <laughs> Musical chairs. And uh, see how. Oh. And I need to go like this, else it won't work right for me. So I hit my desk, and we can go like four, but then we'll go three. And do you see there it now? Going. Yep. Yeah, yeah, if you come six. in late, everybody turns into butt face. It's great. Oh, nice. Reset on its way, oh, and hopefully that means it works like better. No <laughs> Uh, that is correct. Of course, never. Um, okay. this is the what was the question? I have yeah, no idea where I was. So in school and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2005 wasn't um, going so well. Yeah, high school I did horribly. I graduated with like some horrible GPA. I, I immediately purged out of my memory. Um, but I kind of screwed around for a while. I worked a couple jobs and then eventually I somehow got myself into a state university. Uh, went there for physics for some reason, I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I think I've just always really been a space oriented, like I really enjoy anything having to do with space. So I wanted to do uh, astronomy. And of course, physics oh, is the nice. way to get there. Um, on the way there, I discovered that academia is essentially just politics, but on a much smaller scale. And I didn't want any part of that. So I got out of there quick. And now I'm a data analyst in the Washington, D.C. area. So yeah, cool. professionally, that's where I am. That sounds pretty fun. Uh, space. Uh, tell me quickly yeah. um, one really interesting about astronomy. Like, I can always spot Orion, which is like the easiest thing. Like, um, let me. I, I used to have like a really uh, good like elevator speech fact that I could use, um, and I can't remember what it is. I think it had something to do <laughs> that with perfect. Um, oh, uh, this here's a really cool one. It's not specifically space, but it it helps a lot in understanding how some things work. So, from the point of view of where we are when you see a photon emit from like a flashlight and then hit a wall where it's absorbed by something something like an atom in the wall there's a finite amount of time that you observe it for right like it's really yeah. small but let's just pretend it's a second you know that photon existed for a second from the point of view of the photon it existed for basically no time mm. at all like it, time didn't exist for it yeah and that's entirely because of the you, you saw Interstellar, right? Like how you know time went faster the closer they went to the black hole, not. that kind of thing. Oh, you should. But I've known awesome. that. Yeah, I've, I've read um, Stephen Hawking so, uh, and you know right. stuff like that. We're talking about black so, holes. and know all about black holes. Yeah. Right. So the faster you go, time goes um, shorter for you prepare, uh, compared to yeah. someone who's standing still. Um, so that's basically it. Because photons are traveling at the speed of light because they're light. Time for them just doesn't matter. It doesn't exist. They as and soon as they are see created, these guys, they, all these stars, they, they take you know what? How long to get here? That light. Um, By the time it gets here, that star is dead or something, right? Or could be. And well, stuff. could be. The closest star is Alpha and well, stars are Alpha Centauri, um, Alpha and Beta. So and then Beta. Well, Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri, and that's four point four light years. So it takes four point four years for any light from there to get here. Right. So. Yeah. Cool. You're looking into the past. Exactly. That's what I was. I'm like, wow, the past, uh, time entanglement, space. That's a different thing. That's for an end exactly. game show, I think, right there. 
Um, <laughs> all right, let's move along. Um, so I imagine you were a big geek all your life. Um, oh, yeah. And, and super nerdy like all of us. Maybe tell us something. I mean, we kind of just did that. Something really nerdy you've done. What's astronomy and stuff? But maybe something else. Something you um, wouldn't know maybe or... Let's go on like the less academic side of nerdy. Um, not only have I cosplayed before at a convention as a arguably at the time not all that well-known character, but my sister does as well, and that's partially my fault. I was the one who kind of got her into the culture. <laughs> um, I cosplayed Sans from Undertale, which at the time the game had been out for like about two weeks uh, at a convention near me. Um, so I just was basically a dude with a giant skeleton head that had light up eyes. So nice. Uh, cool. That's I love probably not the nerdiest thing, but that's pretty close. That's pretty nerdy. I say cosplaying's pretty damn nerdy. Not around here, it's absolutely normal, and that's kind of what we're doing all yeah. the time. Except for I'm me, kidding. I like myself. Um, but yeah, I go to Dragon Con and dress up as you know comic characters or something like that, and it's just mind blowing. I love it all. Yeah. So uh, you've really been nerd. online for a really long time, right? When when did you first uh, get online? Like just generally. Yeah. Um, I guess the first time, the first game I ever played online. Oh man, I gave you guys one answer, but I'm gonna have to amend it earlier uh, when I gave you that primer. Uh, it actually was like 1995. I had Prodigy dial-up internet on my AST, <laughs> like a 4633, um, nice. and Smoking. I dialed in and I played. It was some the mud. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I wasn't old enough yet. So I'm I'm 31 now. So at the time, that would have put me at like. I don't know, seven or eight, a little bit younger than that. Um, I yeah. think I was playing some Sesame Street game. I remember it. I mean, it was wow. just like, uh, like a little like basically you point or you you choose these options and you it's like Sesame Street themed. But that was the first time I ever went online. But that was kind of linear, I guess. Like there was no interaction with other people. Uh, the first time I played with actual other people was probably when I played Diablo One, uh, and that was like oh, sure. what two thousand or so. I played that too online. Oh, heck yeah. Not a shit ton like some of my stuff. friends could play all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that was Diablo 2. Diablo 2 is where I burned a lot of know. my life. It was Diablo 2. <laughs> I played Diablo 1, but yet 2 was insane. That's yeah. where, yeah, a lot of your life was mm-hmm. insane. Yeah, I've, I've been around a long time, I guess, at least from my perspective. I'm sure other people have been around longer online, but it feels like a while for me. That's, that, that, that's, that's pretty awesome. There really, I mean, before, really before that time period, you had to have been in like a college to really get online because before then mm-hmm. there really wasn't a whole mm-hmm. lot of uh, commercial internet access. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the only Doctor. reason that we, had, uh, that we had a computer that could access the internet is because my dad was in the Air Force. Um, and when he was at work, they would dial in to basically, I guess it, it would be the internet at that point past that before that they had stopped with the splitting of the military internet and the, uh, the you know, the actual commercial internet, um, and kind of merged it together and tunneled through and everything, but they had like modems and stuff there. And he was like, we got to get this at home. So cool. it's partially his fault, I guess. Right on dad. Yeah. That's a good thing for him to be uh, partially fault for. Uh, so let's keep going with games a little bit. Some favorite old school mm-hmm. games. Uh, and like what type and genre do you like? You know, RPG, FPS, Strat, text-based adventures? I don't know. <laughs> um, so the first games I guess I ever played uh, a lot of were the Command & Conquer series. Um, I played a lot of the original Tiberian Dawn um, I played Dune 2000 as well, which was by, by the game or the same developers, Westwood. Um, I played a lot of. Uh, I think I probably played the most of Red Alert One, um, although I think I enjoyed the first ones more. So those are all real-time strategy games. Uh, it's like right. select units, build units, and move them around, and that kind of thing. Um, the really cool thing about those games is that they didn't have CGI cutscenes. They had full motion video with like actors like acting it out. It was super oh, cheesy. Cool. It's like a sci-fi B, you know, a sci-fi channel B-roll Definitely movie B-movie, kind of style. Yeah. <laughs> it is awesome. I loved it so much. It was so goofy. Um, but I played the heck out of those. Uh, so I guess I've played mostly. Um, Early on, it was mostly RTSs, but then once I found MMOs and like anything that involved the big community, that's I guess that's kind of where I got hooked on. So yeah, WoW is part of that. Did you get in like EverQuest? Yes. And it had some older friends that were 
into I, EverQuest I was a little, heavily. I was a little bit late uh, for the Everca- EverQuest train. Uh, right before yeah. I started playing World of Warcraft, a uh, high school girlfriend tried to introduce me to uh, Anarchy Online, which was out kind of at the, I played right at the beginning song. there. Yeah. Yeah. No, she played it a ton and was like, you got to try it out. And I played it. And um, one of my uh, my nitpicky bits about MMOs has always been if the UI is garbage, I can't play the game. Anarchy Online's UI was completely terrible. So I never caught on. Um, the game looked cool, though. Like, the idea is awesome. It's like, you know, sci fi, cyberpunk yeah. MMO. But... Yeah. That's what attracted me. Yeah. So, is that your first MMO, Anarchy Online? I didn't. I, I think I basically logged on her account once or twice, and I, oh, I'm not sure if I would count that. Um, my first MMO. I'm not sure if you would call it an MMO, but it's pretty close to it. Would probably, probably be uh, Grawl Online, um, which is the game I mentioned before. Um, it's tough to call an MMO because there was the most people I ever saw in one server or world was maybe 200, 250. Um, but it was very much like VR chat. Uh, if you wanted to develop as a player a world, um, you could. Or you wanted to write scripts, or you wanted to create graphics or animations or things like that. Um, you could do all of this. Uh, the game, the game looked like a um, uh, the first uh, Zelda game on the SNES. I forget which one it was, uh, but it's that top-down view with those kind of um, uh, nice rounded edges on the tile uh, tile sets. Uh, God. Which- I forget which one that one is, uh, the first one is on there. I have I several friends who are going to murder me. It's just called Zelda. Link to the Past. Yeah, no, that's Link to the Nintendo. Past. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, Link, Link to the, the Past. So, well, it was the... That's okay. Wasn't, but it was the first like, one, the SNES, wasn't it? the best one. Yeah, SNES and the first Super first one I, was on the NES called Le- yeah. The Legend of Zelda. The Legend yeah, of Zelda. The, yeah, it yeah. is the original. Well, we are going to travel down. There's a Zelda episode back like six months ago that we went all into it. <laughs> Either way, the game was basically a multiplayer rip of that game. Like it, it was. They used the same tile set, even in some cases. But um, I eventually got into like scripting and programming through that game. It had its own built-in scripting language called Grail Script, which was kind of a weird merging of JavaScript and a couple of other languages at the time. Um, and I started playing around with it. And then some developers on a player server uh, said, "Hey, you kind of know what you're doing, sort of. Why don't you help us out?" So. That's kind of where I got my, um, what I do currently is basically programming, like for my job. And that's where I kind of started picking up on it. Um, but that was my first right MMO-ish experience. So then after that, you got you got into, wow, was that kind of like next up on the... Oh, yeah. No, yeah, Grail, uh, Grawl, I guess we've decided, uh, was the gateway drug. <laughs> uh, World of Warcraft was the straight up methamphetamine straight into the vein um i mean that's <laughs> yeah that that was yeah. um mind-blowing um to me at the time i'm sure people would play ever quest were you part uh, of those no um Call yeah later. 40 man um yeah. the On i was a little late for vanilla yeah i was a little late for vanilla oh, late so for i no. kind of gotcha. i i hit cap i was slow leveling like i was super slow at leveling so by yeah, the time that I had like logged on enough and like leveled through and done all the quests and explored and stuff and actually hit 60 burning crusade was about to come out, which was world of Warcraft's right. first expansion. And, and then so that's when there, I actually so couldn't play those yeah. old ones. Cause right. Playing them. Yeah. Right. But then that's when I actually hit level cap and then decided to really get into like guilds and doing raids and things like that. Um, and I, uh, I went full bore into that. I was actually like a progression raider in World of Warcraft, which means that we were pushing content that other people in the world were pushing to try and figure out and uh, like kill the bosses for the first time. Um, and actually was oh, nice. ranked decently well for a while and then burned out after about a year of that. Um, okay. But I continued playing World of Warcraft all the way up until like last year. Um, cool. But yeah, I still go to BlizzCon. <laughs> Um, like I went, I just came back from BlizzCon like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so sweet. Blizzard games yeah. have always kind of been a, um, a a constant for me. Like I've, I just always play them. If a Blizzard if Blizzard releases a game, I'm probably gonna buy it. and I'm probably gonna play it. That's just how it is. Me too. I own them all. Yeah. Back the first Warcraft and even the um, <laughs> the Vikings, Lost Vikings, love that shit. That was interplay, yeah. but then it was Blizzard. Um, but what, how was BlizzardCon? Just a couple highlights from there. 
Oh, no, it's it's always awesome. Um, I go with my sister who decided uh, normally she cosplays and has actually been in the cosplay contest a couple of times. Um, but she didn't go this time uh, to cosplay. She just went as a, you know, a normal goer, um, went with a couple of friends that I know from well, that I guess I originally met through World of Warcraft. Like these are people that I've known for a decade at this point. I don't really think of them as wow friends anymore because we hang out every yeah, like, yeah. year. We, we go and rent a beach house or something. Um, yeah. uh, but awesome. the, it, it, I mean, we, we got to see, oh, we got to see Muse. Uh, they played this year. That was really, that was really cool. We were like front right up against the stage. Uh, we got to see them announce the new expansion, uh, which I think is called, uh, like battle for Azeroth or something like that. Um, nice. bunch of new stuff. It's always fun. Cool. It's very lively. Um, and a lot of people, but somehow not crowded, very well organized. Hmm. Yeah, it yeah. was great. Let's talk about um, Grail. Grail. Sure. St- what are we? Dude, I got you either way. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me um, about what that project is and how you got started with it. So um, I guess I got started with it probably late 2000 or so. Um, I had a friend in high school who was like, hey, check out this game. Um, I downloaded it and tried it out, and it was really cool, and that was Grail Online. Um, eventually, we... I got to the point where I figured out you can make your own stuff. I started playing around with it. And then, you know, I got, I, I got the attention of a player server or player world, which was basically the way this game was laid out is that there was an official server or two that was called like classic and then grail 2001, uh, which was like the paid server. It had extra features, active development, that kind of thing. And you would pay like $40 Mm -hmm. a year to get access to it. Um, but then there were player servers, and these were players who forked out their own money or a team that forked out their own money to basically rent or license um, the server that they could build on for however long. Um, and these uh, worlds would be, I mean, you could do anything. There was a world that was like kind of like gang battles. Uh, I think it was called Era. And I mean, you would go around and you would do jobs like, you know, uh, steal stuff. It was like GTA kind of. And then you'd like shoot other players with guns. Um, there were a lot of cl- kind of more classic play servers. Uh, the one that I worked on was called Delteria, D-E-L-T-E-R-I-A or something like that. But it was very kind of a classic approach to it in that it was kind of like the Zelda games, but you just had more players. Like you went around and you found the level two sword and the level three sword and you found all the hearts and, and you know, the bombs and all that kind of stuff and the treasures. Um, so I... Got when I got into the scripting, they wanted me to help, like you know, develop these different tools and quests and that kind of stuff. Um, and I got to meet, I got to meet a lot of people that way, learn from a lot of different people. Um, and I guess I kind of started uh, getting a feel for how online communities kind of work and uh, come together through that game initially. Um, it, it was very close; like everyone knew each other's name. Everyone, it, it was a lot like VR chat still mostly is at this point um but uh sure. you know everyone and when you see someone it's probably not the first time you've seen them like someone yeah. can become notorious for something or known for something and it's not like they're a celebrity like you'll never see them it's like you'll probably see them walking around or something like that and you can talk to them about it um so it was very small very tight-knit nice. but yeah I, I i did that for a couple of years Something else that you poured a lot of time in is uh, Discord. Yes. Um, you're very proficient in it, and that's because you've managed a very large Discord. Um, and, uh, you know, VR Chat, uh, me and, and VR Pill manage ours. Um, we mm-hmm. get lots of help from you and the community because uh, we have a lot to learn. Um, tell yes. us how you got, why, why did you get involved in uh, running a Discord server, and how is it running a huge one? Um. So the server that I run uh, with, I'm not sure if I'd call it huge, but it is big. Um, so it's got about like 2,000, 3,000 people in it. It's for uh, a, a fan community for a game called Homeworld, which is another real-time strategy game that I played. Uh, I, I think the first game it came out in like 1999, and then another one came out in 2002. And then they released a new one, which kind of sparked the, uh, the creation of this uh, new server. Uh, recently called Homeworld Deserts of Karak. And myself and another fan um, who were both 
trying to create like a subreddit uh, for this game, we met or we we kind of ran into each other online trying to create these things. We were both trying to create these communities. And we said, why don't we open up a Discord server? Because I'd been using Discord before, not as a, a I guess, a uh, community kind of uh, centric tool, but more of a how to keep in contact with friends thing. And mm-hmm. I thought, yeah. well, yeah, sure. Let, let's give this a shot. Um, so we built up the server. We, 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 um, we built, like put the rooms in at the time. It was, there were no categories or anything like that. So we like devised the system of separators and stuff like that. Um, and we built up a rule set, uh, and just kind of did it by ear. Um, and then about a month or so later, that guy dropped off the face of the internet. Um, so the, he transferred ownership to me before he left wherever he went. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's the good part of it. Um, but that did mean that I basically had a server that at the time was around 1200 people and growing very quickly. I had to pick up a mod team and administrator team. Um, and, uh, I built a, a discord bot, which is still in use there. Um, using, uh, node.js, which I learned specifically for that purpose. Um, that kind of handles moderation and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, after that, it it's uh, Discord has proven to be such a useful tool for that community and for every community that I've seen that it just blows me away when I run into a new like online mm-hmm. community and it's like, oh, you don't have a Discord? It's like being around in the old days and you would like, you know, go to someone's website for a game or something like that, a forum, and they wouldn't have an IRC yeah. channel. You're like, what yeah, are you guys you doing? Yeah, IRC. Where, Right, exactly. I mean, Discord is essentially modern day IRC. I mean, it, it's it's. You may have your gripes and concerns with Discord, but uh, unfortunately, that's kind of how uh, that's that's how it works at the moment. But yeah, the Discord definitely they're evolving um, and changing it all the time. Oh yeah, you know? they so iterate that, that's... super quick. Like yeah. it, that's awesome. I, I love that they they test features and bring them in basically. I mean, on the order of like weeks. So. Yeah, Discord's an awesome tool. I love it. Yeah, a lot of people have switched over from from other stuff like Slack and yes. uh, Skype to yeah. Discord. I've noticed. Yeah, especially with the video chat being added in, uh, which works beautifully. Uh, by the way, I was able to see you guys partying oh, nice. in uh, Orlando. Oh, well, oh, sweet. Some yeah, some people were down in uh, for the meetup in Orlando, and uh, uh, I believe Yuan oh. called in on the video call oh, yeah. and. Oh, we were, were able to say there? hey to everybody. Oh, yeah. I don't remember yeah. who was there. I was so fast, so many people. But did I come by and say hello or never saw um, I think so. I think you walked by the camera yeah. and kind of gave us a wave. You, you seemed sure. busy. I was, and it was hard to tell who's who and talking. And, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, it's hard when there's no cool. like uh, name tags. Of name tag. <laughs> you have to remember people by their yeah. places. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's get into VR chat. Um, sure. And maybe yeah, some general find out VR about stuff. It. Yeah. Um. So, I'm pretty sure that a uh, the first time I ever saw VR chat was a, a long time ago in the Vibe subreddit. Someone posted a video of a bunch of people sitting in a Star Wars cantina talking. Mm-hmm. I don't remember mm-hmm. what they were talking about, but it was. I remember specifically the red name tags. They're green now. Um, but I remember specifically the red name tags and people were just sitting around. I'm pretty sure Cubed was in the video, Cubed Paradox, because I remember seeing mm-hmm. that name. Um, but then I saw that video and I didn't do anything about it because I was whatever. I was probably still playing World of Warcraft at the time. So I wasn't really interested in finding something new. But then after a while, after I stopped playing WoW, um, I decided to dust off my Vive, which I hadn't touched in months at the time, and see if I could find anything uh, that I could play. So I was like, you know what? I don't feel like buying anything. Let's see what they have for free. You know, just the gimmicky stuff that they have on the the store. Sure, why not? Sure. Um, and then I mm-hmm. saw VR chat, and this was in July. Uh, I think it was like July 11th or 12th this year. Um, I logged on. I had the red robot uh, model, and I went into the presentation room, and there were a bunch of people in there. Um, just like chatting about random stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure I remember specifically there was uh, P was there. Um, I think Ar- I think Arcadia may have been there. I think a bunch of other people were there. I, I, I don't even remember. It was a while ago. But there's just all these people here just talking about random stuff. 
And they all have like these crazy avatars. Some people had like anime characters that are recognized as MMD uh, models. Uh, some people had like stuff that looked completely custom. Some people had games uh, like models, stuff from Left 4 Dead and things like that. And I was like, wait, you can like, did you guys get this from, you know, somewhere in the game or what? And someone said, no, you make it yourself. And instantly I flash back to like my grail time. I mean, this is like a decade and a half ago at this point. I'm just like, whoa, you, there's another game right, you can yeah. do this in and it's in virtual reality. I had no idea right, right. and it blew my mind. So I immediately was like, okay, I'm going to be right back and I'm going to go find some tutorials and figure this out. So I come out uh, of VR. I put down my headset. I go on YouTube to search for tutorials and they're all desperately out of date and uh, don't really give me <laughs> sure. the information I need. Um, <laughs> So uh, I stumbled through creating a, an avatar for probably about four or five days. Um, I figure out Unity. I figure out Blender, uh, neither of which I had opened before. Actually, that's a lie. I think I opened Blender once because I was looking for video editing, and then I closed it because it was horrible. Um, <laughs> did the same thing, looking so, for video editing, and that would be ridiculous. Yeah. Blender is yeah. terrifying. Blender <laughs> is terrifying. <laughs> but once you tame it, of it's cool. It, it is a beautiful beast. Um, but anyways, I, I spent all that time figuring it all out. And then I finally figure, uh, figure it out. I get an avatar uploaded. Uh, it's horribly decimated. It looks like complete garbage. The fingers are just like, you know, <laughs> something you'd see in a horror movie. Um, but it works. And I come in and I start talking to people and like getting tips from people and figuring stuff out a little bit more at a time, uh, making friends and seeing people over and over. And I'm slowly realizing, maybe not actively, that this is basically the same experience I had a while ago, where there's people that you see every single day and you make friends and you grow relationships mm -hmm. out of it. Um, right, right. And you kind of network with people, uh, both socially and for in that specific example, figuring out a technical process. Um, so yeah, that's how I found VR chat and that's how I stuck because as soon as I saw that, that's how the community worked. I was like, this, this is the same thing again. This is awesome. I miss all my time in grail online. That game is long dead. It, it turned into a mobile game a couple of years ago, which is, uh, effectively mm. death in my eyes. Um, mm. but mm, sure. it, uh, it, I was, uh, sorely wanting for another community like this and another Air, I guess, game or application or whatever you want to call this, where I could build my own anything. I mean, I can make myself look like an ice fairy princess. I can build a world that looks yes, like I'm on Mars. <laughs> I can do anything I want. It's awesome. And with scripting, eventually, I'll be able to do things like build an MMO system where you could, you know, build a game within a game. So, I mean, the possibilities at that point are effectively endless. And that's that's my shit. That's my jam right there. Like, I want to create that stuff. I want people to talk about it. I want people to tell me, this sucks, do it better, and then I make it better. So, that's kind of a long answer for created? where... Oh, yeah, no, I have uh, I have a couple got? worlds, one of which is public. Um, it was my first world I ever uploaded. Uh, it surprised me how easy it was compared to avatars. I did things kind of in reverse, I feel like, in levels of complexity. Um, avatars can be very complex to get working properly uh, to the way that you want to. Worlds, you can slap down a plane and a world descriptor and a spawn point, and you're done. That's it. Yeah. Um, but I have a world that's a, a port of a uh, MMD stage. Um, I have another world that I use for a event that I run called Anime Theater, where we literally watch anime and anime movies, uh, doing it on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And um, I have another world that is for an ongoing project that may or may not come to fruition um, that I'm working on, on and off. So I don't have anything big just yet. Um, I'm kind of waiting on scripting because, uh, like I mentioned before, that was my thing in Grail. So I'm waiting on that. Um, sure. But, uh, yeah. That's where I am now. Excellent. And, like, tell me some favorite... Um you know, or interesting worlds you've seen, avatars you've seen. They don't have to be favorite, just stuff that comes to mind that are, that's cool. Yeah. So, um, I think as far as worlds go, uh, my favorite slash, actually probably favorite and most interesting um, is uh, Digi Trevex's world, uh, X1 Seisoken City, I think. Um, 
uh, Digi is a uh, MMD artist. Like they've been for a long time. Apparently, I didn't know about this until I met them in VR chat. They've been making like MMDs, so this style of model uh, for Miku Miku dance for a long time. Uh, they're basically professional at it. Um, they also are a ex game dev, so they have a lot of uh, knowledge to pull from. And he built this beautiful world. That's I mean, it looks like this sci fi anime sort of like universe with like floating cities and buildings. It's got this stage in the middle where you've got like these light effects on a panel, where people will go up on the stage, play music to their microphones, and you can set off lighting like you're a lighting technician. It's so cool. Like I sat there for about 20 minutes just basically playing with it and putting it in beat with the music. It was like playing Guitar Hero, except it was Pyrotechnics. Um, that was probably the most fun I've had in any single world. Probably, And I think that's probably due in part to me being easily entertained by explosions and lights. Um, but that was the one I remember the most, uh, most recently. As far as avatars go, uh, Oracle always has the best avatars, no matter what. <laughs> I wish he was here because his avatars no are, matter what. yeah, they're, they're gorgeous, custom they're made. amazing, yeah, completely custom made, uh, and almost always talking out of, it, out of his ass, which is my favorite right. part. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He uses medium uh, to, to make those. Oh, really? Um, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. Huh. Um, he, you know, of course, he has to decimate it and stuff, but those are, that's how he got into his custom stuff. Medium. Made yeah. in VR. Made, Made in, in VR. VR. Used in VR. Uh, how about, how do you see VR chat growing, or how do you want it to grow, you know, a year out from here? What do you see it wants, or five years after that, you know? Um, so, one year, I, I, I'd like to see... Um, and I, I feel like uh, I don't want to put any pressure on like dev teams or anything like that because I know that um, on one hand I want all these features for the game and I want all these cool things to happen but on the other hand I have a um, my company that I work for in real life and Meet Space again uh, is small like it's uh, bigger than VR chat but it's still small we have like 40 employees so we're mm -hmm. very we're very focused on what work we take on, what contracts we take on, and we very clearly map out what we're going to do with time frames and give accurate times and that kind of thing like that. So I understand the the plight that VR chat devs go through, the entire dev team goes through, especially during crunch times, because I have felt that. Um, but that being said, let's take that off the table. Let's pretend I'm heartless and cold and I just want all these features right now. Um, scripting is like my personal oh my god please give it to me now uh because that will open up everything more importantly um and this is going to get a little bit technical for a moment but bear with me scripting with the ability to access external uh, apis so the ability for me to say to a arbitrary server maybe that i wrote code on hey store this value process it and give me back a value or something like that um that would Something that simple, adding in with scripting, I could do anything. I could create a persistent MMO world with, like, I could create Sword Art Online, but in VR chat, dead easy. Like, it would probably take a week, and I could have something working pretty, pretty well, if that was possible. So that's, like, the number one, big number one for me. Um, but on the other hand, if I'm thinking more utilitarian um, and uh, more straight road, uh, I'd love to see more work on optimization on all ends and awareness for the community on like avatar optimization um, because right, that right. is a big deal. Um, but bigger picture, five years. Um, I'd love to see 10,000 people online in VR chat. I have no idea how you would do that, but I'd love to see it like 10,000 or 50,000 or however many we have in five years. That's a long time. So who knows? Um, maybe moving to like a custom engine so you guys can do way more of what you want to instead of being limited to mm -hmm. unity. Um, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. just open things up that basically allows VR chat to be uh, a more of a metaverse and less of an application. I launch from steam and put on a headset. Like I, mm -hmm. it would be awesome if I put on a headset and VR chat was just the thing that was there. Like, that was just yeah. what it was for. I can access anything. If I want to go shopping, I could, you know, I could do that yeah. in VR if I wanted to. So you start in your VR chat home or something, and then you just right. you go to, to everything else. Like, 
I, I never want to lose the customizability, like the ability for me to put in my own content and for other people to come sure. in and view it or for me to go in and see other people's content that they create completely freely with no restrictions at all. But um, on the other hand, I would like to see something like that where there's this kind of formal, uh, centralized, you know, I want to go and shop on Amazon. Well, you can go to the Amazon world and, you know, browse products or view them in 3D, stuff like that. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Super awesome. It's a great answer. I really like that. <laughs> VRCAT.club. <laughs> Love yes. dot club. I didn't know that was a thing, and that, that's cool, man. I like this. I, I didn't either till we dot bought club. it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I had no idea uh, dot club was a TLD until we bought it. Um, so VRCAT.club is a community forum that has launched very recently within the last two weeks. Hold on, I gotta make sure I'm not throwing this jacket on a cat. Nope, no <laughs> meows. Um, so we, uh, and when I say we, I mean um, Psych, Ave, um, and myself are the people who uh, opened up and run this forum. Um, it is a traditional message board, uh, like via a browser. We saw a need for something that was more permanent than Discord. Discord's great. I love Discord, but it is very fast. Um, it's It can be difficult real to keep time, up basically. with. And yeah. it, it's real-time conversation, and there's small snippets of information. Like, if you want to find a tutorial for, you know, a specific process, Discord is not the best place to get that from. Maybe to get a link. Yeah like to a video, but it's not the best place to uh, like see a walked out process. So we created this message board. Um, it has gotten quite a bit of good attention. Uh, we have several people posting like videos. Um, I posted my tutorial videos on there. A lot of other people have posted videos. Um, there's several new uh, guides on like uh, optimization, which is kind of the current meme for the uh, avatar development community. Um, Someone has, uh, uh, give me all your cats, um, which is not a demand, but the guy's <laughs> name, uh, has developed a blender tool that automates a huge amount of work. And I'm talking like taking me bringing in this model would go from about maybe two hours to do it just perfectly uh, to like 30 minutes. And the most, like, it, it cuts out a huge amount of work. Um, it's amazing. And they, they've gotten a lot of their feedback from the forum and from like talking back and forth with people in the forums, posting errors and being able to go back and say, Oh, well, what was that error that guy reported? Like we saw a need for this message board. We put it up, we talked to you guys and just said, Hey, we're putting this up. Just let me know. You guys were very excited. Uh, so that, that was mm -hmm. encouraging at the time we put it up and it instantly yeah. got a good response. But yeah, we were, we were thinking awesome. about that sort of thing for a little while um, mm -hmm. because of the problems that Discord has and yeah. the need. Cool. Um, so is this the remind first, me uh, to go back about memes. Uh, when we get oh. to anime, I want to know a lot about memes uh, because I don't know enough. So uh, <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> is this the What's first the uh, web board that you've helped manage? Or have you done any um, others in the past? I've done many others in the past uh not as potentially big as vrcat um message boards were always kind of my like main mode uh like if i rem if i reminisce and think back and then and i'm nostalgic about talking to other people on the internet like 30 years from now i'm going to be thinking about message boards because like the main way that i talked with people online was via like something awful or via uh god forbid 4chan in its early stages or some of the other smaller boards that were out there and i did run a couple of them um not n anything nearly that big but like on the order of a couple hundred people here and there for various interests um so to answer your question no it's not the first uh okay. but right on right on yeah so you want to get into names um uh sure so what exactly is the question here i'm gonna need more context yeah. you, 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 were, you were gonna start a question about memes oh the memes i thought you said something about games we had some other stuff that we kind of missed i got you uh, uh let me see if there's anything I, I else in vr vr cat dot club did we cover that enough uh of course we want the community to sign up um oh VR yes no, club. please um, um yeah, go over there sign up for an account so yeah, yeah. so just like active 
Uh, one of my favorite, uh, speaking of something awful, one of my favorite something awful sayings is never don't post. Just post. Just keep posting. It doesn't matter if your content is crap. Just keep putting stuff up there. Okay. Eventually, it'll get better, so okay. don't worry. Um, I can, but I can like, put crap on there. Cool. Oh, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> keep the bars I mean, low for me. Oh, well, exactly. I mean, I mean if you shit. think if you find a, a cool <laughs> VR video or a funny video of a cat or whatever, I mean, there's like an off-topic section. There's a VR section. There's a tutorial section. There's an avatar section. There's a world section. Um, so, like, if you want to participate while you're like at work and you can't get on Discord or whatever, and you just want to like go on there for your lunch break, I mean, that's what I typically do. I just kind of troll through the forms there. But yeah, please register. Please use it. Um, it's uh. It's been extremely useful even as an administrator for me. Like the tools, dude, I, I can't overstate how useful those tools are. They're so good. Um, is there any other features that are unique that um, people might dig? We are, are we're, it's not implemented yet, but we're currently looking at a way um, for uh, users to vet other users for commissions. So we do have users that are actually actively using uh, the advertisements board uh, for commissioning avatars and importing avatars and creating new avatars from scratch. Um, a couple of people have actually successfully completed uh, commission deals through there. Oh, so we're looking for a way to uh, basically have like a vet system, like a reputation system. So uh -huh. if you want to buy, if you want to spend, you know, 80 bucks on a super fancy avatar and this guy is, you know, saying that's how much you got to spend, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable if they've done this 10 different times for 10 different people versus a guy who's got a big zero next to their name. Sure, sure. So that, oh, cool. that's something we're looking at doing uh, in the near future. Yeah. So that would be a cool feature. Nice. Yeah. All right. Anime and memes. Let's just talk memes real quick. Memes, so, like you threw out some memes. What are the current memes going on that are interesting that, oh, you know, gun through the community go <laughs> it needs to know these things. What am I missing? So let, let's uh, actually, I'm going to redirect your question slightly um, sure. because this, uh, this kind of has context with um, the, the community that I consider myself a part of here in VR chat, uh, which mm -hmm. actually there was an in game episode about, uh, which is the, uh, it's generally called the anime community. And that doesn't really mean anything aside from what people are into when they first enter this kind of sub community. Um, these, uh, the, the memes that are kind of going around and the in jokes and all this kind of thing, um, I am finding that unfortunately my age and my inexperience and my inability to dig through the latest posts on Reddit or 4chan or whatever are now dragging me behind. So I'm losing track of a lot of these things. But, um, like, uh, this is again probably another in game topic, but like, I keep finding myself hearing people repeating these things. And the reason why they're funny is not necessarily because the way someone says it is funny, but it's because they're repeating it over and over and over. And I mean, I kind of get it. Like, can I don't you know, help I'm, me I'm, make an avatar? Like, that's a meme now. It, well, oh, oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> so, yes, that was oh, originally. Yeah, chat memes. Yeah. Oh, things that yeah. No. Created here oh, there's that are a... funny, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I need to know about. I know I've okay. got to go out into the to Reddit and stuff and learn more about memes. I know how to do that. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah. So, um, I guess how how do I create custom avatars? Kind of um, was that Zeon's baby? I don't remember. I think Zeon may have originally created so. that, but he does. He doesn't want that. Oh, uh, it's been confirmed to me. Thank you. Um, but <laughs> I um. I think he was afraid of it getting credited to him uh, because he was afraid people were going to get, he was going to get in trouble because people were using it. However, I don't think that's the case because people actually love it. So to explain it, uh, basically, uh, here, I'm going to stand up. This is very important okay. and I need to switch. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be in this and you go up to someone and ask in as bad of a Russian accent as you can say, how do you make custom avatar? And that's the joke. That's it. That's it. That's literally it. And the point is, is that earlier on and still to an extent right now, a lot of new people will come in and a lot of these people maybe don't speak English as the first language. Um, and so they have an accent or they're from a different country or whatever. But they come in and they ask and they see the same thing that I saw when I first come in. It's like, oh, my God, all this stuff is so cool. I want one of my own. I want to bring in my own cool stuff. 
So they ask, how do you make a custom avatar? Which is a natural first question. But when you hear something repeated like that and asked to you over and over and over, it's not necessarily a joke to make fun of it, but it's kind of a joke to make fun of the absurdity of it because it's all you hear yeah. sometimes, some days. True. Um, I think that's one of the bigger ones. Um, there's a lot of different ones um, that are much smaller circle centric. Um, in fact, uh, they're so prevalent that a group of friends in the anime Discord server actually created a, a set, a deck of uh, Cards Against Humanity cards, but they specifically have to do with VR chat. It is 400 awesome. white cards, wow. and 400, 440 <laughs> white cards, and like 110 or so black cards. It is extremely offensive. Like obscenely offensive. I cannot weigh this enough, uh, or or say that enough. But it's hilarious. Like I played it, I think on Saturday night until like three a.m. and I had to go to sleep because I like lost my voice. I couldn't talk anymore because I had laughed so hard. Um, sure. There's just all these tiny awesome. little jokes and these tiny little memes that come out of it. And whether it's just an in joke or it's kind of poking fun at someone who, actually, half the cards. Um, have to do with a TCL who tends to um, lecture quite often. It's a good yeah, lecture. Don't get me wrong. He's very oh, no, smart. No, exactly what and he mean. knows yeah. a lot. But he, he tends to kind of get himself into a he wants to explain every bit of little part of something, which I totally get. Sure. But half the card, not half the cards, but a huge amount of the cards have to do with making fun of TCL. And he plays the Cards Against Humanity game with us. <laughs> so, I mean, and he, uh, it, it's stuff like that. So these are kind of in jokes and kind of that sort of thing. Uh, the, the kind of you had to be there uh, joke that really spreads like wildfire through here, um, through VR chat as a whole, uh, which is, I mean, could be a topic all on its own. Like you've got this tiny little compressed forest of people. And if you drop the fire fireball of a meme somewhere in there, the fireball of a joke, it's going to spread super quick. So, sure. but yeah, now um, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of these memes and in jokes in VR chat. Um, some of them uh, I, I couldn't bear to repeat because some of them either make fun of people <laughs> sure. that really shouldn't be made fun of or are horribly offensive, but that's the nature of the beast. Um, but uh, that being said, a lot of that has yeah. given rise to, as I've noticed, like, the YouTube people that have shown up recently, like Matt Six and yeah. Nags and all these people, and Ryan, um, who have brought in a huge amount of people, like an obscene amount of new players are beca here because of them. And they've got their mm -hmm. whole, own whole set of things. Like Matt Six has his apples, and Ryan's a tomato for some reason. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Apples and tomatoes. Yeah, I heard Dude, there's this... like, uh, like gangs or something, or Oops. different tribes <laughs> yeah. and... There's like know. these different gangs and like groups that keep popping up. The latest one I've heard of is called the Rainbow Rainbow Cult, and it's all a bunch of people who use this rainbow shader on their care on their character. And it, I mean, it just mm. looks like a regular old little rainbow like panning UV shader, but people run around as it. And then there's some other ones like there's um, the Lolly Squad, which is just basically very small anime girls running around. Um, and it's, it's crazy. I lose track of it sometimes, but it's hilarious to come online and see, you know, oh, I came, I, I went to work at, you know, nine o'clock this morning and I come back at six and I log on and all of a sudden there's this friggin' virtual gang of anime girls that has just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. That's insane. Like that. Yeah. That, it's like flash mobs almost. Flash that's mobs that keep coming back. Like they keep coming back. Like, they don't but leave. That's what they'll do. Turn into 20 of the same avatars, go somewhere, and basically do yeah. a sort of flash mobby kind of thing, which I yeah. find interesting. I find yeah, the interesting. Solid Snake one is another one that I've seen a lot. Sure. Like, the, sure. it's... Uh, I've seen that one, sure. Yeah, that one's good. Snake! And you see him yeah. snake all around, all over the place. It's just 20 people yelling that. I mean, it gets old after about two minutes, but it's still funny. It's true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you, you run um, anime nights on Mondays, yeah. Wednesdays, and Fridays. What, what time is that? Uh, it's Tuesdays, Wednesdays, oh, and Tuesdays, Fridays. Tuesdays. Oh, that's all right. Um, we try and start around 9 to 9.30 uh, Eastern time. Um, okay. And uh, we typically kind of do some organization on the anime Discord server, which is in the related channel on the official VR chat server. Um, you can just click on that, and there's an anime theater channel. 
so okay. on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we do episodes, three episodes of something. I think currently they're watching uh, Konosuba, which is a fairly recent show. Uh, then on Fridays, we do movies. Uh, we are in the middle of watching the Evangelion rebuilds right now. But we do that with the oh, cool. built-in video sync player, um, which works pretty well. We've gotten about like 30 Sounds people in that room. Uh, nice. uh, absolutely we'll subbed. That in here. 100% subbed. Yeah. I'm out. The only thing... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, if if we ever do like Cowboy Bebop or like Trigun, then uh, sure. we'll probably do dubbed for that. That's a personal preference, right. though. Well, yeah, and some, they get some good voice acting. You know, it has to be also they did. voice acting. and that out, of, out of pure luck, apparently, me. they got really good yeah. uh, voice actors for, like, Cowboy Bebop and stuff. But, yeah. Uh, why do you wear that avatar? Um, initially, it was because I liked the character. Um, the character is named, um, depending on how you pronounce it, Cerno or Churno from a game called Toho, which is, uh, if you ever played, you know, the Raiden or like, uh, arcade games where you have a plane that goes around and you shoot the guys coming down at you. Um, it's oh, like sure. that. Yeah, classic. It, it, it's like that, except there's no planes. They're magical girls. Uh, <laughs> and there's not one or two bullets coming at you. There's like yeah. 500. Um, so uh, this character is in that game as a boss. She's not very competent. Um, in fact, she's uh, typically referred to as an idiot. Um, I initially <laughs> just chose her because I like her. Um, she, I like her design. I like the cold in real life. Like I enjoy being like in colder climates. So it kind of worked out because she's an ice fairy. Um, and she's an idiot and thinks she's the best at everything, which I'm certainly guilty of at certain times. Um, so that kind of encompassed, uh, I don't know. I was just like, I want an avatar. All right. I could find a churn, a churno avatar pretty easily. Found her, brought her in and it worked. The problem is, is once I started to get to know people and all I was wearing was this, um, this is all I'm basically allowed to wear now. (laughs) If I change to anything else or if I try to swap, right. It's my identity. If I swap to something else, people come up to me and just be like, no, no, you, you can't do that. You got to swap back. (laughs) Like the most I can do is like wear you know, a different color reskin or a slightly different costume or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and did you say that was like a, uh, uh, basically an arcade shooter kind of uh, game? Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. It's I love a, this game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this Those one's awesome. a, it's called specifically a bullet hell uh, because the main intent of the game is not really how well you can shoot the bad guys. It's how well you can dodge the bullets because there's a lot of them. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I love Dodge. And I love watching uh, people in Japan in the arcade play those games. Oh, it, it's crazy. And, yeah, yeah, no, it's... I, I will, I've I never actually played too much of these games. I think I've played probably about an hour's worth of the games in total. Um, I always just get really frustrated. <laughs> They're way too hard for me. I'm no good. I'm terrible. I just like the characters. I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good, I have to say. Um, <laughs> but I've played those things for 20 years or something. <laughs> Give it a shot. So, uh, talk about um, being a, a girl avatar. Some of us um, mm-hmm. don't understand that as much. I mean, I don't think the judgment from at least me, some people are going to come in this place and be like, oh my God, it's weird. That wasn't my mm-hmm. situation, but I'm curious. I'm like, well, why? And is it mean because, uh, you know, uh, they want boys to like them and they'll be the girl or. Or do they I mean, mean like looking at the girls in, in games and so maybe uh, adopted I mean, that or it just doesn't matter, boy, girl, and I just picked the one I like and right. happen to be. Um, so female. there's there's this is different for everybody. So I, I am speaking solely for myself uh, because there are definitely people who are in this community who wear their avatars for very specific, very serious reasons, and then there are people like me who were just like, I chose this because she looks cool and she's cute, and that's about it. Um, that, I mean, and for me, that specifically was it. Like, I, I don't really tie gender of the person in real life to the gender, uh, the gender or sex of the person in real life to the gender or sex of the character that they're wearing. It doesn't really matter. Like, it doesn't affect me, right? I don't, I'm, I'm not really worried about it. it. It doesn't really change how I interact with people. I just kind of talk to them, and if they want to talk to me about cool shit, then I'll talk to them about cool shit. It, 
I mean, it, it it's such a low um, priority like topic for me in my mind. I don't normally think about it. I, I guess I can put it that way. And it kind of um it catches me off guard when people like if I'm with a group of my friends and we're hanging around and as typically anime characters in VR chat do, we sit in front of a mirror and talk at each other. I guess because we like staring at ourselves. We're very narcissistic. Um, but if someone comes up and says, why are you guys all girls, even though you're, you're very clearly guys, it's just kind of like, I don't know. Why are you whatever the hell you are? I mean, this is just what we chose. It, it's, it blows me like, just, it, it blows me sideways because I just don't have a, an answer for it at that very moment because I never have it in my mind. It's never an active part of my uh, thought process. And um, it can be confusing, however, um, and uh, difficult sometimes uh, because there are, are there is a population and a presence of uh, people who are trans or identify as a different gender in VR chat, um, and if their avatar looks one way and my mind, you know, assumes their voice is another way and that sort of thing, unfortunately, my inner or my inner reaction is to try and gender that automatically. I kind of have to force that out of myself. Um, because I have no idea their backstory. I don't know what they they want. So um, that is a constant battle on both sides, uh, I guess, to both kind kind of understand why it doesn't matter that much to me, but at the same time respect the choices of others, you know, how they feel or who they want to identify as. Yeah, because it, so, it matters to them a lot, and this kind yes, of medium allows absolutely. that to, they, they can be whoever they want. Um, exactly. That they didn't think they could be they before. Want. You don't have to be human. You could be an Give you a toaster. Yep. You could be yep. a revolving door. <laughs> if you identify as a revolving door, you can be one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I still want to talk about this because uh, it's very interesting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, people are confused by it. Um, yeah. It, it can be a little shocking if, if you're not used to it or if you're not expecting it. And obviously, Especially you when you know, first come into VR chat. Yeah. And it comes from lots of fans of anime. You probably are a fan of anime if you're picking characters mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, she's and not specifically she, from one, but yeah. Yeah. Or, well, yeah, yeah. I, I consider the culture a little bit similar. Uh, yeah. So... You, so how do you? So you don't, this doesn't matter when somebody identifies you as a female. Does it? Does it matter? I'm not that. Um, you got it wrong. Whatever. I mean, so if someone did or did not, I mean, it uh, it wouldn't really affect my conversation with them, and I would assume that it wouldn't really affect uh, how they want to interact with me, right? I mean, if if it did, then that may not be the kind of person I would want to talk to in the first place, like. If it matters that much to someone, whether I'm a guy or a girl wearing a guy or girl avatar, uh, even though if someone asks, yeah, I'm a dude, I'm a straight, you know, straight cisgendered male who is wearing this ice fairy princess get up. It doesn't really affect anything. Like if I was a girl, I would still probably want to talk about the same things. Personally, it doesn't affect me or my conversation or my friends or anything like that. And I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sorry. So I'm having such a difficult to time like elaborating. Something like a Lara Croft game, um, where you're playing a character and it doesn't really hmm. matter what kind of character it is. Pepper's a character. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, a game uh, character. So, yes and no. So, your specific example, Lara Croft. Uh, and I know you didn't mean it for it to be specific, but I think it's useful that you were. Um, she she very clearly is there because, at least in the early games, like the early Lara Croft games where she was just like, you know, four pixels or four polygons or something like that, she's very clearly designed the way she was because of sex appeal. But in, say, for instance, versus nowadays Lara Croft and the latest Tomb Raider games, it's more that that's who she is like she is identified as Lara Croft she's a badass explorer kind of thing if she had initially been a guy and it was still a guy now I mean the game would probably be the same in fact isn't it with like Nathan Drake or whatever that uh yeah that's kind of like they're they're almost like the same kind of thing yeah right exactly and I mean the only difference is just I mean there may be a different backstory of things along those lines but I I feel like this is kind of where this is right exactly yeah yeah 
It's a I mean, if bit. someone, so I'll, I'll counter your example with another one. In World of Warcraft, you can obviously choose to play as a guy or a girl or a male or female character. So if I was playing a night elf, I could be a male night elf or a female night elf. When I played, I've played a female night elf. The reason why is because the night elf male animations looked like complete garbage. He constantly ran around like he had to stick up his butt. So I didn't want to do that. <laughs> but I still wanted to be a night elf. So, okay, I guess I'll be a night elf girl. I mean, that was basically my decision process there. Um, so for me, it's a very... It, it's it's In that particular case, it was an aesthetic choice. In this particular case, it's aesthetic and also because... There don't, there aren't really uh, any like, I don't know, characters that are guys in the anime style that really appeal to me. Um, I guess okay. that's basically it. Okay. Ice Prince doesn't sound as cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah. What about so? But there's there are other sects of anime communities that are totally different than sort of. Um, you know, it's not such a big deal for you. Um, just right. like, you know, the way things look and, um, you like probably the size is probably a lot of fun being the shorter, I imagine. Um, um, when I, I actually don't notice it most of the time until I start getting around people who have like the default avatar height or better yet right. when I'm like actually building like a new avatar, I, I made my Christmas like skin, my Christmas avatar earlier, uh, today and I put it. I always put my character at the canonical height of the character, which is 130 centimeters. I accidentally put her slightly smaller uh, when I made her uh, this time around. And the VR chat SDK came up and said, hey, your character's too short. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm normal sized. And then I thought about it a little bit and like, no, I'm really, really short, aren't I? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it is definitely part of it. There is like the, I think you're trying to say about like the different groups, like the lolly squad and that kind of stuff like that, right? Yeah, I was going to start to or, get there. Like for me, okay, how I treat people, it's hard for me not to treat the lolly squad as cute little girls. Like, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, that, that my, my initial, act, you know, hold their hands and talk like <laughs> to them a certain way. Uh, whereas I might be like, yo, Bob, get all, you know, gruff and where's this cute little girl here? I'm not going to say right. the certain things. And I feel like I almost turn into just, you know, who I am in real life. Uh, um, and well, so I mean, that's been interesting to maybe me. Maybe that's the reaction they're trying to get out of you. Um, I mean, right. and if that's what they want out of people to react to them as if they're, you know, a cute little girl and you can pat her on the head and that kind of thing. And sure, whatever. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's very clearly no harm meant there. I mean, it's just kind of a, a look that they're going with. Um, and from a surface level view and from what I can see, that seems perfectly fine. Um, but they do, uh, they do interact with you in pretty funny ways. I know at the last meetup, two of them went up behind you and held your hand for like five minutes before you noticed. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was kind of those. Was- that was pretty funny. Uh, they've done it here too for like thirty minutes. I don't know how they're holding the freaking arm up that time. Like that is hard to do. Yeah, just so, sitting there like this. Yeah, I don't know if I can do you, that. Do that for one minute and you're you're like try mm. that that's already <laughs> enough. Um but, and yeah, I mean, so it's super cute. It, it is. And when you talk to them and when you actually like talk to them, um Typically, they don't actually use voice. Uh, they're just silent. Sure. But I, I've occasionally talked to some of them using voice. And when they're, you know, not really in character, they're just, they use voice as normal. And they sound just like a normal dude. Um, it just sounds like a guy. And you talk to them and they talk about, you know, hey, I had this problem with this avatar. Or, you know, I, I saw this really cool world or something like that. And it's, it's um, I wouldn't say it's jarring. Um but it took a while for me to kind of disconnect my, uh, my, what's the word? Like my, my preconceived notions about someone who would act that way and then just be normal at another time. Because in, in VR, it, I mean, they're doing these sorts of things for fun or to get a reaction out of someone. Um, in that particular, yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe it's just for their own fun. Um, I know that a lot of the popular uh, VR chat YouTube videos lately have been very centric with like anime characters messing with other people or getting reactions out of them. So maybe that's it. I don't really know. Um, but it took a while to figure that out. Like I, I had to mentally disconnect, you know, this, this is weird sort of thing. Cause it isn't weird. It just felt weird because I was in virtual reality. Gotcha, gotcha. 
But there are, I think, some things, or at least it's weird to me that I don't, I don't understand waifu. I don't understand weebs. <laughs> I don't understand the lolly part. That's, you know, there's lolly. I mean, I, I can give you TLDR on each one on. of those pretty quick. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, I think people want to know, I th- especially if you're older like me. I'm out, I don't I okay, need to know these so, things. Uh, I want to feel completely comfortable. So to, let's start from the top that you went with. So waifu is pretty easy. Um, if you feel really like, I mean, if you're watching a show and you see, uh, you know, a male, well, actually the, fe- the male version of this term is husbando. So waifu, husbando. Oh, wait, wait, um, husbando. I got to remember this husbando. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. I need a hus- so, Bob, will you be my husband? Bono? Bondo? Bondo. Uh, Bob's husband, husband, he, he husband with an O slammed on the end. Okay, there you go. There you go. Sweet. You got one. But it's basically a character, I think, that you feel a, like a, a affection or connection with. Like, these people will see a character, it's just like, oh my god, this is, like, if there was a person like this in real life, I would want to, you know, be with them all the time, or be in a relationship with them, or whatever. They just, these characters maybe express, yeah, like, uh, qualities that you see, that you would like to see in a person, or that you would enjoy to see in a person. Um, or maybe they just look really cute, and that's your thing. Like, you're purely focused on the aesthetics, you know. I don't know, I'm not going to judge you. But anyways, that is typically what a wife or husbando is. A lot of people say that you can only have one, um, but I say people that say that lack vision. Um, so Mormons. we'll move on to the next one. Um, so weeb is another term that actually I had to explain to uh, Psych and Nomono, Nomono at, um, at uh, Endgame. A lot of people try and use this term, I guess, in a derogatory manner. Which is kind of funny because the anime community, specifically the A board on 4chan, came up with the term themselves to describe themselves. It is a complete nonsense word that comes from, I believe, a Perry Bible Fellowship uh, comic from like 2007. Um, it just basically describes someone who's really into like the Japanese anime culture kind of thing and really like it, it defines a part of them. Um, that's basically all the term means. It's just someone who's really into anime stuff or, you know, that kind of thing. It can be used in a derogatory manner, but it always fails because it's like, hey, you're a weeb. Uh, yeah, no shit. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't mean anything. Um, you had a third term. Cards. I forget what it was. What's that? Uh, Weeble cards. Weeble cards. Lolly. Oh, Lolly. Lolly was if anybody the third else has one. questions, just throw them out there. Yeah, Lolly. So, Lolly, pop. Lolly is a bit touchier. The, sh- the it is a shortened term. It is uh it is a the shortened version of Lolicon, uh, which is basically someone who likes like younger looking characters, essentially. Thankfully, the term has kind of evolved to indicate a a, a character who has like a younger looking theme to them. Um, like in anime terms, that it would be someone who has a bit bigger eyes, who's shorter, that kind of thing. Um, like Powerpuff that's... Girls kind of thing? Exactly. Uh, I suppose so. The, the term is, is very questionable because it does involve some things that uh, a lot of people basically consider morally reprehensible. So I kind of understand that. Um, actually, the majority of people consider morally reprehensible. Um, but a lot of people um, may not see it in a, a a lewd sense, I guess, in a sexual sense. It's just kind of this is the style of the character and that's what it's called. Um, so that's like basically the what that character means. And the look or maybe being an innocent you know, I miss my childhood a lot yep. maybe I'd want something it, like exactly. that. Exactly. It, it is definitely well, about like sexual an and underage and really the, getting fucked yeah. up and I hope I don't get exactly. like that up being a moderator. It, so basically Jesus, yeah, when you were one. Basically, if I put on Gunter's avatar, I'd be a lolly. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to be a... Uh, yeah, that's, that's incorrect. <laughs> you, well, if you want to be me, that's just, you know, that's not that's a lolly. That's your thing, man. Being younger, that's you just know, your what, thing. what he was saying about... Oh, uh, well, be well, you have to be underage. You have to be under... No, Gunter could be your husbando if you want to. Looks like it's underage, but not. Looks like under... Well, not necessarily. If I put on Gunter's avatar, I'd look... Younger than what I am. And when no, it's not same question for no, it's not that. when we get when we get a moment. <laughs> Depends on who you talk to. So sure with Lolly. 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 Yeah. Okay. What's up, Lousy? So I'm gonna go back to physics because we, we talked about that earlier and I wanted to ask this, but uh, we're busy. I'm yes. curious what you think about the EM drive, if you have any thoughts on that. <laughs> Dude, I've talked about this like three or four times today. What the hell happened? 
You're gonna have to do it, of course. I wasn't. Lighten, I guess I missed it. Lighten us. You're so, a physics major. Well, yeah. Um. So the well, EM drive. Probably explain it better than me. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Um. I mean, I I understand how the guy says it works, but it's bullshit. But we'll get to that part. It's very it's very <laughs> important we cover the in between. So the EM drive is something that a guy has invented recently, or not recently, he invented back in 2001 and tested. It is what is called a reactionless drive. Um, in which that no propellant is used, but it produces thrust. Um, so if you think of a regular rocket, like a um, the Falcon 9, it uses, I believe, a, I think it's a, actually, I'm not sure what the fuel source for it is. I think it's, uh, nope, I'm not going to make a fool of myself. It burns some kind of fuel, which makes it go that way. Well done. So if you, <laughs> right, exactly. So, smart. so let, let, let's take this a little bit, Exactly. Let's make this a little bit easier. Um, you can also have something called an ion drive, where you have these particles floating around, typically xenon gas. You electrically charge it, and you shoot it out the back of a spaceship, and it makes you go forward a very, 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 very small amount. So the reason why all these work is because you have particles that react and then push in all directions, but it just so happens you have everything contained. So it, the only way it has to go to escape is backwards or downwards in the case of launching from Earth and then it moves in the opposite direction because that's how force works. The EM drive has no propellant. Um, you basically, the way it works, as far as I understand, is you have a cavity that is consisted, I think, of maybe copper or something like that. I, I don't remember what he used it for. One side, it, it kind of looks like a, 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 a cone that's had the top cut off, and um, you inject uh, microwaves into it. The microwaves bounce around, and they produce a net motion, a net force that goes forward. The problem is, is nothing comes out of this drive, and like you don't get any waste or anything out of it. You're basically getting energy for free, um, which is why this is immediately bullshit. Um, however, there is some kind of force being generated. I personally think that the force being generated is probably due to some temperature or heating problems uh, because when you, it, it's just like a real microwave. If you have a bunch of metal and you turn on a microwave and the microwave is hitting the metal, it's going to get really hot really fast. So one of the problems with the seam drive is keeping it cool. And if you don't keep it cool, uh, various things such as the metal outgassing in a certain direction can cause net movement. Um, but yeah. If this guy's theory, however, is true, and we can scale it up, we now have the ability to travel between, like, planets or even uh, between uh, systems without having to carry on some reaction um, mass. I don't have to carry around, you know, nuclear fuel for a nuclear rocket. I don't have to carry around chemical fuel for a chemical rocket. I just have to generate energy, inject it into this engine, and it just makes us go. So... That's basically Far it. That is, that is the wow. awesome the diatribe I've given now five times today. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's it's that was, that was physics, and people want to know. Oh, great! Oh, wait, I have to do the real one. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody got other questions? Um, are we clear on what weebs are? <laughs> um, now we know. <laughs> I don't know. What's what's uh what's some of your favorite anime? Um, yeah, duh. I think I this is a really tough question. It depends on what mood I'm in. Lately, it's been uh Fully Cooly or Furi Kuri or whatever you want to call it. Um, it is a short uh, FLCL? six FLCL. It is a short six episode long, I think, um, show. Uh, that if you were watching Adult Swim back in the uh, mid-2000s, you would have seen it. Um, it is about a boy basically growing up, and then all of a sudden uh, he has robots jumping out of his head and alien girls attempting to be his girlfriend for some reason, and it's completely wild and completely crazy, uh, and I love the way yeah. it's animated. Um, it's totally it's awesome. It is, it's just mm. great. Um, oh, i got to check that one out. But, uh, however, Sounds I will cool. also say Cowboy Bebop and Evangelion are both uh, pretty close follow-ups. Cowboy Bebop is just a classic. I mean, it's like... It, it's it, wonderful. It's beautiful. It, yeah, you, you just always go back to it. I was trying to think of a, a yeah. like another movie that I could go back to, like a uh, live-action movie that you can always go back to. It's like watching Christmas movies at Christmas. If you want to watch yeah. an old anime, you're probably going to watch Cowboy Bebop. Yes. The music Enjoy. sells it for sure. Oh, yeah. I still listen to it. It's awesome. 
Yeah. Oh, and in Fooly Cooly, the music in Fooly Cooly is amazing. Uh, it's all by a band called The Pillows, which I still listen to. Nice. Let's see. Just a I quick think... comment, please. Yeah, catapult. Yeah, Tupper, I want to say thank you on behalf of the community for all the uh, tutorial videos you make. They're quite good, even though I, they're above my, uh, way above my head, but uh, thank, thank you, you anyway. Yeah. Well, you are more than welcome, and give yourself some credit. You, you, I am positive you could figure it out. If I could figure it out, anyone can figure it out. Um, but, yeah, I, I, uh, I get a lot of thanks for those videos, even though they are literally, like, I record them in one shot sometimes five times in a row. Um, they're badly, if edited at all, um, but people still love them, and they work for people, and it helps people out, and I love when stuff like that happens. So I like helping people. So thank you for, for your thanks. You should consider maybe live streaming your, like, a eight-hour process oh, man. or four-hour or something if, and have people I, come in to communicate, like, hey, yeah, what? what? I, no, I would have to mark that stream as mature because it's just going to be a stream of f bombs um, when Unity <laughs> inevitably crashes on me. No, well, I know there's so nothing wrong with that. We I actually have watch. a question. Yeah. We actually also have a question from the Discord. Just a random, uh, oh, uh, watcher. a random viewer. So this is a remote question for Tupper. Okay, okay. Uh, we 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 talked about Lolly and Weebs and you know uh, waifus. Um, could you explain hentai for those who are unfamiliar? <laughs> <laughs> I know this one. <laughs> on the topic of Lolly. Uh, well, not specifically. Uh, I'll give you the TLDR, and that's about it. It's anime porn. There you go. Yeah. That is literally it. Uh, sometimes. Yep, so not required, but <laughs> not, not all the time. I've seen, seen a lot of that. I mean, uh. if you, it, I mean, it's uh, different strokes for different folks, and I mean, there, there's, it's lots of strokes. Yeah, a yeah, lot in that different. particular yeah, case. That lots of different. Yeah, that that was partially intentional catapult. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there is yeah, this like, weird uh, side, um, and I, I don't yeah. know, I feel like there's people that are out there that know this, and maybe that's why they're taking back, is they assume what they're seeing with the lollies, uh, or maybe that's related to hentai, yeah. they're, they, they're, they're into it because of the, you know, fetish uh, of it. No, absolutely, um, like there's, there's, I, I've seen people come in and start shit talking, like all the anime people standing around a mirror, and they... They're calling people perverts, and it's like that. That's very strange because that's like running into a room full of, you know, someone who's dressed up in a costume and calling them perverts. Like, you know, it, okay. it doesn't immediately follow. However, there are people that might dress up or wear an avatar that could be meant for like a lewd purpose. But it's not. That is the ex, that is the exception to the rule, not the you know the actual rule itself. Um, so I kind of get where they're coming from, but on the other hand, it's it's mostly product of ignorance or maybe just being a troll. Yeah, I don't know. Starting a new trend. I got one. What's that? It's called grab your dick and double click. Oh no! Uh, good Avenue Q. Uh, what, what what's Kotaku? Kotaku uh, culture and is there something involved with like misogyny and like uh, right wing and anime? This was being talked to me about. And I don't get it. it. Doesn't make any sense to me. So, so uh -huh. there's, there, I I have a lot of personal theories on this. Um, but uh, what you're talking about, I think specifically with the Kotaku thing, is probably Kotaku in Action, which is a subreddit that is the central location of a a group called Gamergate, which got a lot of attention a couple yeah. of years ago uh, because of their harassing of various people and that kind of thing. Um, I will avoid most of the, uh, the difficult to address issues on that and encourage anyone watching to do their own research on it. Um, but uh, I will <laughs> instead well address... No, 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 no. That, that's... I'm going to ask the audience uh, next. Uh, well, it's going to take you 10 years to sort out. What I will out. specifically say is that a lot yeah, of these... Oh, well, yeah, exactly. It, it would be a it's very long and storied explanation. Exactly. Um, it is, yeah, it's literally a shitstorm. Like, this entire thing is just complete garbage. Everyone involved with that entire situation with Gamergate is, like, in my opinion, a complete idiot and overreacting to things that, you know... It, they dropped a a 50 megaton nuke on a molehill. There's no better way to put it. Um, but that...
being said, the reason why a lot of people associate like this anime kind of look and like people with anime avatars on Twitter and that kind of thing with that is that there is a large overlap of younger people who have been exposed to anime. So basically people who started maybe watching, you know, Toonami and Cartoon Network in the late 90s and then to, uh, you know, Adult Swim and that kind of thing. And the people who are now becoming active in these groups. I myself am someone who, uh, to put it lightly, is left-leaning, um, and I tend to be very, a, a take a humanist point of view. I'm, I try to be as compassionate as possible, and I try to help people just uh, on the virtue of them being people, of them being, you know, humans like I am. But on the other hand, there's also very hateful people out there who also happen to like, you know, anime that probably like Toho or probably like Cherno and that kind of thing. It's more of a weird cross-contamination that just you only see the loud people, right? And they're wearing uh, an yeah. anime avatar. Yeah. So your immediate response is now in your mind, if I see an anime avatar on Twitter and they're talking shit, well, there you go. That's the reason why. Uh, it's almost yeah. like they're trolling the anime community or yeah. they're embracing it as identity. Or, well, that this is VR and it's a little different, I think. Uh, um, is it always anime? <laughs> it's always anime. It's always anime. Uh, it's always or an so, egg. <laughs> Or an egg. Well, that's like the new mm-hmm. Twitter, Twitter user icon, yeah. isn't it? Exactly. It's you either nothing or anything. Yeah, yeah. It's a little low yeah. alloy for me. Um, oh, sorry. So, yes, you're an egg or, yeah. Well, I mean. That or Sonic, right? <laughs> yeah. Or well, Sonic, yes. Just... There's the third trifecta, yes. Or not steel. Yo. <laughs> so, just be Sonic. So, well, yeah. Sonic. Frogs. For, well, yeah, Pepe was kind of stolen out from yeah, the whole story. meme community, and that's know, a whole different story in of itself. Is that like, gamer the creator, or whatever, the creator is really pissed about that. No, he that. is. I mean, that was it was just yeah. a really, I mean, it was a very bizarre, but I mean, a, a legitimately non-harmful comic that these people kind of, uh, uh, I guess, took into their own hands. Uh, specifically, I think that would be the Paul board on 4chan and R9K, which is Robot 9000 on 4chan. Um, both of those boards kind of commandeered the Pepe uh, uh, likeness. And unfortunately, because of the way they typically act and the language they typically use and their opinions that they hold, it then got associated with people who are hateful. So stuff like that happens with a lot of different symbols. Those symbols get commandeered, and that is... Um, a primary weapon of basically information warfare of information propaganda. You steal someone's symbol and you reappropriate it to something else. Um, mm. So mm. when you see someone with an avatar, an anime avatar on Twitter trolling, um, do your best in your mind to disassociate, you know, that from there. I mean, it's not just because someone's wearing, you know, choosing to have that avatar or whatever. And this applies to VR chat as well, probably even more strongly. So, that person doesn't hold hateful point of views, you know, because I'm wearing something that's related to anime doesn't really mean that. Thankfully, sure, I don't sure. think most people think that. I don't think I, yeah. I think that I uh, when it came yeah, to my, it was I was like, what? Yeah, it, it is, it's kind of a fringe thing. Um, but I, yeah. I do notice it now and again. Um, but thankfully, I think uh, people who see that and make that assumption usually figure it out pretty quickly that it's not a uh, appropriate assumption. Thank you for that. Been needing that for like six months. (laughs) Dude, if you got any more like questions on this sort of thing, I'm, I'm, I I love explaining dumb bullshit like this. It's that's my thing. If anybody (laughs) else does, I know they're there. I just can't think of them. And this is, I wanted this. uh, Yeah, I'm. I'm, You know, I'm in this community a lot. The community, half of it's anime or whatever. a majority, yeah, majority yeah, sorry about that. party, <laughs> and so just trying to completely understand, um, so they don't kick me out. Uh, and <laughs> dude, just just wear know, the yellow name tag; they won't kick you out. That's yeah, true, exactly. That's true. Yeah, now if they take over, somehow they may just take over, and then they get rid of the yellow. I don't know. Who knows? You never know. I'm in fear. That's for sure. Uh, um, I don't but know. Yeah, I mean. Uh, do you see yeah, any, any other problems audience with questions? some of it besides the Kotaku and the hate? Is there any other like things that um, are weird or like uh, on the fr- or just poisoning well, I mean, not the well, but like you know? Well, I mean, it, it the easiest bad. the easiest way to understand it is take literally any other kind of hobby or interest and uh, just kind of sideload it in and replace the words. Like, let's take something. Uh, 
pretty innocuous. Let's say, like, uh, God, I'm trying to find something innocuous in this day and age, and that's I'm failing Knitting. horribly. What's that? Knitting. Crocheting. Oh, yeah. Knitting. Awesome. Crocheting. Knitting and crocheting. Anyone could be interested excuse me, interested in knitting or crocheting. Um, but you have no idea, you know, are they knitting or crocheting a swastika? Are they knitting or crocheting, you know, an Antifa label or whatever? And you have no idea. Are they knitting or crocheting a teddy bear for, you know, their nephew? It, 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 just because they're interested in knitting or crocheting and you see a lot of people that are very loud, that are wearing knitting and crocheting avatars on Twitter and trolling, you know, journalists or whatever, doesn't necessarily mean that your grandma is now part of Stormfront, you know. Although she may be, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm I'm not speaking for your grandma, but um, you know, it, it, it basically just tran uh, what's the word? I guess trans um, plant, God, transplant anime and for knitting and crocheting they are in fact basically the same thing uh but, so it's not that difficult but i yeah, mean I if someone's it. really interested in that it it doesn't necessarily carry that connotation so probably knitting some nice <laughs> red and green sweaters that say fuck trump <laughs> <laughs> that is one side uh, of it i was uh, I think I was going to think Merry Christmas or something becoming <laughs> after the red and green yeah, like so, ugly that, sweater. Okay. That would be a very surprising sweater. You know, you ex it's yes, got it little would. jingle bells all over it. It's got like little reindeer yeah. and instead in the middle in white text, Merry fuck Trump. Oh, well, okay. And don't forget the <laughs> LEDs. Of course, LEDs. I, I couldn't believe that. I went to Walmart the other day because my wife works there and their sweaters actually have LEDs in them. Oh, God. Uh, I thought you were about to say fuck Trump on it. I was like, Oh, here's the fuck Trudeau. Uh, uh, all right, I think this is pretty good. Okay. Um, Last call. Why do you think it's so <laughs> met much anime? Why is it so prevalent? Uh, in VR chat? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, not in the world because, yeah, I mean, I guess young people really like it and adopt it to it. You know, it's animation. There's like a wide variety of avatars available too, right? Because there's already a lot of models oh. out there. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to speak specifically about VR too, chat, yeah, yeah it, it's it, it's a combination of there being a huge like variation of styles. I mean, if you want to mm -hmm. be you know, a cute fox girl, you can be that. If you want to be a bunny girl, you can be that. If you want to be a big, badass Goku guy powering up, you can be that. If you want to be, you know, an ice princess, you want to be a kind of, like, suave-looking guy, there's something like, I mean, there's something like that for everyone, and they're all different styles and things like that. Um, plus, it's, another factor of it is that it doesn't look like reality. Like, when I put this on, I don't want to look like I do in real life. I do that, you know, the rest of the day um and that gets really boring um so i want to try something else uh so that's part of the reason why you know i i in particular choose something so widely different from myself um and then finally um unfortunately uh when i created uh, and uh, i've been told that this may partially be my fault when i created my tutorial videos um they primarily focus on bringing in miku miku dance avatars which are pretty much all entirely anime things. Um, so the process for bringing in MMDs at this point is documented. There are tools for it. And it, if once you're experienced, you can get a model in in like an hour or two. Um, so now it's dead easy to get these. Um, yeah. So sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, that makes a lot of sense. Like, yeah, the availability. Uh, exactly. Everything else is as available. Uh, maybe right. would be different. Maybe not. But right. um, I mean, with the... what's that? What do you What do you think about all the drama about bringing those into VR chat? Um. So I think it's a little overblown. Um. It depends on what specifically what drama specifically you mean. Do you, do you mean, mean like um, the tool that we're not supposed to we're not supposed to talk about on Discord? The tool that must oh. not be named. The oh, tool that, oh, the, that the okay. owner asked us not to use, yeah. Or people. Well, I'm going to talk about it because you didn't ask me shit. So uh, MMD, MMD for it's Mechanim in the rules is in, a, uh, Discord. It's in exactly. The rules in Discord. Yeah. It is a tool called MMD for Mechanim. Uh, it's a Unity plugin. Um, 
it basically converts the the uh, PMX or PMD format that uh, MMDs live in into an FBX, so you can just drop it into Unity. There's a couple problems. Um, the most glaring of which is if it detects uh, VR chat, the VR chat SDK. Uh, I actually decompiled the plugin and looked at the code. It's very simple. Um, it straight up just looks for the directory called VR chat, and then if it sees it, it will delete the contents of the SDK. Just gone. And the reason that he's doing this, I think it's kind of hard because there's a language barrier, is that a lot of the MMD community is very, um, they're very uh, protective of their models um, to the point okay. where um, it, it's, uh, it's kind of like, you know how if you tried to Xerox a, um, a dollar bill, it'll say, hey, you can't do that. You know, a printer will tell you you can't scan this. There's actually protection oh, I didn't built know in. That. That's interesting. Cool. Oh, yeah. In modern yeah, printers, right if you try and copy it at high resolution, it'll give you an error on like Photoshop. There's probably ways around it because it's software, but whatever. It does exist. And if you do the same thing with this tool, he tries to do the same thing. The problem is, is he's not a giant government entity. He's just a dude writing a Unity plugin, and he's basically injecting malicious code to delete files out of your project. So that's the reason why uh, they did that, because this guy was trying to enforce other people's copyright for him. The problem is, People like me um, and several other people that I know of actually went to the authors of their MMDs, even if they don't speak the same language that we do, and talked to them and said, hey, I want to use your avatar in this game called VRChat. And I explained it to this person using Google Translate. It took like 10 direct messages on Twitter for us to understand each other. And they said, yeah, sure. No, that's totally fine. Thank you for asking. In fact, here's some holiday versions of the avatar you can use. So, oh, cool. These, yeah, the, I mean, these artists are typically, like, I would say 90% of the time very receptive. Uh, they just would either like to know or, you know, are just interested in knowing. The The problem with that tool is that someone else tried to enforce their copyrights for them in which there isn't actually, that's a whole different kit and caboodle. The copyright law for this sort of thing is um, a very light gray at best. Um, so, yeah. That, that's making any money they cover most of it? <laughs> no, they're not. Okay, I mean, they're freely available this. online to download, just, yeah. which is, I mean, yeah, I, I went online yeah, exactly. and I just downloaded this, and it was released by the author. So, uh, not to, men for not to mention purpose, at this though, point, I would say What's MMD it? for Mechanum is kind of a junky way to get your MMD yes. into VR chat anyway, because use it. Because the better the Blender plugins available give give you the chance to do things like optimize the avatar and get rid of yes. uh, unnecessary bits that tend to, that these M a lot of these MMDs tend to be flooded with. So hey, wait, don't malign uh, MMD avatars. They're not terrible. I didn't, I didn't say that. I said <laughs> sometimes no, no, they come well, with stuff they don't need. Well, no, you're you're absolutely right. Like the, that tool itself and, and, is complete garbage. It doesn't keep it like unmerges meshes. It it doesn't do materials very that's well. Some weird stuff, um, actually, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it does some very strange things. Mostly because it's trying to automate everything. So, um, you don't get to do things like I want to create a texture atlas, so I only have one material draw call, or I want to merge all my meshes, or I want to remove these extra polys that'll never show up. Um, so. That's another reason why the tool sucks. So, yeah. oh, how was that? Uh, first tutorials don't something? use it, so well, was, just don't, yeah. don't even bother. I was just curious why the MMD models are released on the internet. What they're released for? Hmm. Typically, they're released for use in Miku Miku Dance itself, which is. Can you explain only... MM, yeah. MMD in general to everybody then? Sure. Yeah. It's, um, it's essentially everywhere in VR chat, and we don't even know what it is. Some of us. Oh yeah, yeah sure. Perfect so question. um, people using it don't, don't know what it is. <laughs> so initially, uh, I'll have to go back and explain a little bit more. There's this thing called a Vocaloid, and a Vocaloid is essentially a virtual pop star. The most popular of which is one called uh, Hatsune Miku, which is a girl with long green pigtails, and she sings songs and dances around. Um, I mean, this is a pretty big deal. She's had real life concerts where they, do you remember that? Um, what was it? The gorillas concert at like, what was it? Like the Grammys a while ago where they had like the 3d versions up on stage. They do that, but for Miku and like, there's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that go to these and it's insane. So this is all done with this software that anyone can download, anyone can make models and anyone can make the, you know, make dance videos and animate them and set them to music. Um, 
the cool thing about this is, is that it's pretty easy to make these models and put them together, which now means that it's pretty easy to find these models and import them into VR chat. Um, that's most of these models were created for the intention to be or with the intent of being used in Miku Miku Dance. Mine in particular, um, the the artists I follow them on Twitter. They they uh, it's uh, Electrica twenty fourteen, but they typically retweet photos of like the character and poses. It's used like a a photo taking software kind of. Um, because in the actual game that this character comes from, she's like a thirty two by thirty two sprite. She's super tiny. So the fans have kind of gone crazy with, you know, creating her character and her personality and how she looks. And, you know, if, mm. if you really like a character and there's no official art of her, wouldn't you want to, you know, make your own art? So, but yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different reasons people may make these models. It's mostly for making those little dance videos or animations. Um, mm. Some people just enjoy it. It's, it's interesting to go back to the, the, the the discussion about all the variety of anime avatars that can come from that then and then mm-hmm. all the dancing videos that are being made with that but yeah we don't have to be i mean i love those videos they're, they are legitimately impressive like people people either manually animate these things by hand and i mean these are like five minute long videos of like fully choreographed dance scenes yeah and i mean one dude sitting there just moving like i'm gonna move your arm one millimeter here and then one millimeter here and do all the key framing and do everything yourself. And these wow. are like month long effort or months long efforts by these people. I mean, it looks cool. So, but yeah, that's where these models come from. It's half the battle right there. Knowing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I'm good. Any more questions? All right. Last chance to pick um, a weeb's I, brain. I have, um, <laughs> one, just coming back the on the subject of anime. Oh, look, it's a weeb. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, based on your personal experiences, uh, what is the genre of anime that you usually find yourself watching the most, and why? Um. Hmm. Mm. Myself, uh, hentai, right? Yeah, it definitely a lot of <laughs> hentai. There's usually like tons of tentacles involved. That's my yeah, shit. Exactly. So that's a genre that's a medium. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, in all in all seriousness, it's usually uh, a combination of um, I, I've got weirdly um, I wouldn't say broad because they're very specific in these senses, but they're very far separated. Uh, so I like things that are very goofy and um um i guess i wouldn't call it bizarre all the time um a good examples of them are like nichi joe or uh um oh god i can't remember it and this is going to kill me later on but it was uh oh azamanga Dayo. uh like very uh they're, they're mm. called four coma which is uh, japanese for four panel it's basically a form of comic that's just four panels long so that's all you got mm-hmm. to fit the joke in, right? You got four panels. So the short, the jokes have to be very short. They have to be very on point. They have to be very easy to understand, um, or at least to pick up on. There's a lot of wordplay. So that's one that I really like. It's basically comedy, but it's like sketch comedy. Um, and those are those are really good. On the other hand, stuff like Hot Blood Mecca, like Gurren Lagann and uh, Gun, uh, Gunbuster and Die Buster, that's also like really my thing. Giant fighting robots, Pacific Rim, but anime. That's basically it. Like that is my shit. I love that so much. So, yeah. Is that good? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, more questions? Feel free. You got a week here. Op- a I'm really an open nice, book. cute weeb. <laughs> uh, you're at D Tupper on Twitter. People could shoot yep. things to you. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah, feel free to tweet me. I don't know how to use the Twitter. I'm, I'm, or I, I, it's a foreign concept to me for the most part. I think it's the first form of technology that I fail to understand. Like you know how everyone always says there's that first thing that you lose track of, and then from there on it's just downhill. I think Twitter was that it was that for me, um, but I'll, I'll try my best to respond. Um, yeah, and then of course VR 
cat.club. Mm -hmm. Find him managing that over there, and you can chat with him there, of course, on the VR yep. chat Discord and in VR chat. Is there any other things to mention? Uh, people should um, know I have, as uh, Catapult mentioned, and I mentioned a couple times, I have a uh, YouTube channel where I have a bunch of tutorials. Um, I think it's literally just youtube.com slash Tupper Tutorials or something like that. Uh, it's There's a bunch of links to it in the VRChat forums, and also there's a couple tutorials in the tutorials channel on the VRChat Discord. Um, if I'm not uh, in here in VRChat, I'm either working on something for VRChat or hanging around in one of the VRChat Discords, playing games with friends or uh, shitposting memes, you know, the daily <laughs> grind. As we do. <laughs> yeah. But right, also, cool. if anyone has problems with, like, avatars or things like that, tutorials, I am, uh, I may not respond immediately, but I'm more than glad to help. So please message me. I don't Twitter mind. Again? I don't bite. Uh, at D Tupper. D as in David, because that's my middle name. And Tupper's my Got last it. name. Little known fact. Not that little mm -hmm. known. Yep. What a twist. I was about to ask if you guys covered that before I got here. Nope. That's my uh, last name. Nothing, nothing to do with I the didn't ask storage. you. Yeah. Why did you choose Tupper, right? Which I usually yeah. ask. So. It's, my, it's my last name. It's uh, cool. My, my other two names are, are, although I understand the meaning for them, they're fairly common. Um, so, Tupper, when I introduce myself to people in real life and here, Tupper is a whole lot easier to remember. Cool. I like that. Yeah. All right, um, Bob. Anything you want to shout out? Um, I got, I got nothing this week. All right. Ain't got nothing. Uh, well, for me, just a couple things. Via chat calendar, keep putting that in everybody's brain. That's where events like this are listed. Or tomorrow, uh, lousy social followed by end game. Um, there's some cool trivia game. Like there's make an avatar. Just this time, yeah, you don't have to make an avatar. I, you know, I, I anybody, Bob and me, we could do it. Um, it's, it's just to be social. Come out and be social. Yeah. <laughs> um, and lots of other fun stuff. Find the calendar. And, you know, you can subscribe to it on Google. So it'll add that Google calendar to your Google calendars or there's other ways oh, for nice. other systems. Um, but that would, then you could set your alerts and stuff. It's, it's just a Google calendar. There's not, we haven't built out the website to handle all that. New set is on its way. Um, that's freaking awesome. Olivier has this place looks a lot better. You don't see it, of course, but like imagine there's downstairs stuff. There's this whole uh, box with screens that you guys will watch those screens and see what the camera person is seeing. Um, so that'll be very nice to be a better experience for the audience and more. Um, but if you all would like to volunteer some time um, to make, you know, make some stuff for that or help out, get in touch with me after the show or just. DM me on Discord. Um, or you can support me by sending me a tip on Patreon. <laughs> Flash Gunter. <laughs> or really, what really helps a lot is just follow me on, on, on Twitter. And really, Twitch. I, I don't have much of a Twitch audience, and I've been doing some fun stuff. Of course, YouTube, Twitter. GunterUniverse.com is the thing. So find stuff. Hit some buttons. Tell me you like me or, or poop on me. I don't know. Shit like that happens. <laughs> That's it for me. I got to hit these buttons to make the, the music work again and my desk is in the way so it's actually a challenge there yes mm. good night everybody <laughs>